Now at 5, we have some tips to help you stay safe as the temperature drops. Plus, Joplin police say the victim of a hit and run yesterday has died of her injuries. And is former President Trump immune from federal criminal prosecution? I'm Skyler Henry in Washington as a three-judge panel weighs whether charges stemming from his efforts to overturn the 2020 election should be dismissed. The four states most watched news starts now. We're already dealing with wintry weather, but in a matter of days, the temps could drop much lower. This is KOIM News at 5. I'm Dow Quick. Let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Yeah, we got the snow for us today. About an inch of snow is what fell in Joplin. Of course, we've done some melting also in Pittsburgh. 2.5 for the season. Had a half inch last Friday, half inch uh, at the end of November. Average snow for us is 13 inches. I'm forecasting 10 to 13. Last year, we only had six and a half inches of snow. Now it's much colder today. Look at this. Upper 20s to lower 30s. We have those gusty northwesterly winds, which is going to make it feel even colder as we go through the evening hours as we drop back into the 20s. But here we go again. So let's go into Thursday. Here comes rain. Here comes an Arctic front snow moving back in on Friday. And then check this out. By the time we get into Saturday morning, temperatures down into the single digits. We're going to be talking more about this moving in here in just a bit. All right, we'll see you soon. Now, as the mercury drops, the need to find shelter going up. Medical officials in our area warn of the dangers that can come from staying too long outside for the uh, cold temperatures. They say the best way to stay warm is to wear plenty of layers if you must be out. It's also important to stay dry, of course, as the moisture will make the cold worse. While taking steps to stay warm, be aware of overheating. You can also was also going to be dangerous in these frigid temperatures. Joplin police said the woman hit by a vehicle yesterday has died of her injuries. That crash happened around 6 p.m. last night near West 7th and Gray Avenue. Authorities say a female pedestrian was hit by a dark colored SUV, which then fled the scene. First responders found her lying in the roadway unresponsive and rushed her to the hospital. This morning, the victim died due to injuries from that crash. Local nonprofits giving a child care facility a massive donation pledge. The Mount Carmel Foundation in Pittsburgh is pledging $100,000 to the Family Resource Center. That money will be used to buy and install playground equipment at a new location the center is building near Via Christi Hospital. But the foundation still has to raise the money. They plan to do that at their 40th annual gala on January 27th. Voters in Grove, Oklahoma are deciding whether to approve a sales tax increase to fund the construction of new police and fire department facilities. The proposal would increase the city's sales tax by six-tenths of a percent. Supporters say the need for new facilities is great as they've been using the current ones for 40 years. Polls close at 7 this evening. We're going to have the results on KOAM News at 9 and 10. Former President Donald Trump was in court again today trying to get the election interference case tossed, claiming presidential immunity. Skyler Henry has details. We think we had a very good day today. Former President Donald Trump seemed to be feeling optimistic following a more than one hour long hearing into whether he's immune from criminal prosecution for the events leading up to January 6th. Trump's attorneys are trying to make the case that presidents cannot be prosecuted for actions taken while they're in office. If a president has to look over his shoulder or her shoulder every time he or she has to make a, con a, a controversial decision and worry after I leave office, if I go into jail for this, when my political opponents take power, that inevitably dampens the ability of the president. His attorneys also say the only time a president can be prosecuted is if Congress first impeaches and convicts him or her, an assertion that the government called scary. If, as I understood my friend on the other side to say here, a president orders his SEAL team to assassinate a political rival and resigns, for example, before an impeachment, not a criminal act. The three appellate judges hearing the case seem to agree. I think it's paradoxical to say that his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed allows him to violate 
criminal laws. The D.C. Court of Appeals is not expected to issue its ruling today, though it may very well be a quick decision, as Trump's January 6th case is scheduled for early March, right in the middle of primary election season. Trump says the criminal cases are political attacks to keep him out of the White House. I think it's very unfair when a opponent, a political opponent, is prosecuted by the DOJ, by Biden's DOJ. The case could eventually make it to the Supreme Court, but that may not happen until after this year's presidential election. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Donald Trump is facing four separate criminal prosecutions, two federal, a state case in New York and another in, New, in Georgia, all while being the clear leader in the polls for the Republican presidential nomination. The mystery illness that has kept Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin out of the loop has been revealed to be prostate cancer. Officials say Lloyd's cancer was discovered in early December and he underwent surgery on December 22nd. Then on January 1st, Austin was admitted again due to a urinary tract infection, which was a complication of the surgery. Even President Biden and his cabinet were not aware Austin was hospitalized until he had been there for three days. Israel's army bombed Gaza and battled Hamas fighters today as America's top diplomat returned to Israel. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is on a mission aimed at stopping the war from escalating across the Middle East. Israel has traded cross-border fire with Iranian-backed Hezbollah militants in Lebanon for three months, stoking fear the war in Gaza could spill over into a wider conflict. Still ahead, drinking more than water. What may be in your water bottle that you can't see? I'm Christian Benavides with the findings of a new study. Plus, researchers work on a new test to detect Parkinson's disease early. Those stories next in Health Watch. Topping today's Health Watch, researchers in Boston are developing a test to detect Parkinson's disease early. They believe it could potentially identify brain abnormalities before patients show symptoms, allowing them to begin drug treatment sooner. In many cases, Parkinson's disease causes irreversible brain damage before symptoms appear. New research shows that bottled water you're drinking well, it contains more, uh, more plastic than previously thought. Christian Benavides tells us what that means for your health. Brian and Katie Feely say they usually have their reusable water bottles on them, but you can't always avoid plastic. We typically will only do that <laughs> if we go out, like we were just out to get lunch. New research suggests bottled water contains a lot of something we can't see. On average, a quarter of a million particles, uh, including both microplastics and nanoplastics per liter. The study from researchers at Columbia University looked at multiple samples of three common bottled water brands. They used a special type of microscope that for the first time was able to detect microscopic nanoplastics. Being able to see smaller and then being able to tell what type of plastic chemical composition is that. Researchers say the plastic seems to be coming from the bottle as well as filters used in the products. It's groundbreaking. Dr. Sherry Mason from Penn State Barron studies plastic pollution in fresh water. Their findings are significant because once you're looking at a particle that is smaller than 100 microns, it can actually make its way across the gastrointestinal tract, be carried in your blood and end up in your organs. Dr. Mason feels the study can help scientists understand the possible health impact of these particles. She says growing research indicates reducing exposure to these nanoplastics is a good idea. Should we be drinking tap water over bottled water? Absolutely. Statistically, it's just a lot safer for you than bottled water. Remembering your reusable mug. And it's not just bottled water. Dr. Mason says we should be thinking about all the ways we may be exposed to plastics. Christian Benavides, CBS News. The International Bottled Water Association says currently there's a lack of standardized methods and no scientific consensus on the potential health impacts of nano and microplastic particles. Too much TV time for your baby or toddler could leave them disinterested in other activities. That's according to new research at Drexel's College of Medicine. It found that very young children who watch TV or video might be overwhelmed by loud sounds or bright lights. The American Academy of Pediatrics discourages screen time for babies under 18 to 24 months. 
And that is a look at today's health news. A little bit later, Meta is adding a new feature aimed at improving safety for teams. Plus, we have uh, Arctic Air, our first Arctic blast of the season. Moving in in a few days, we're going to have those details coming up. Well, of course, we got the rain and we got the snow over the past couple days. We needed both of them because we need the moisture across the region. Uh, rainfall wise, since midnight, only two hundredths of an inch, but we had an inch of snow for the month now, almost an inch of rain, which is pretty good. We're doing pretty good as we go into January 29 Nevada 31 in Neosho. It's 30 in Parsons temperatures. Of course, are going to be dropping back as we go through the overnight hours. We do have those northwesterly winds. We're still going to get gusts kind of up there as we go through the next several hours. And then after midnight, they'll start to calm down a little bit. Then they switch out the south tomorrow and start to pick back up again by tomorrow afternoon. But what this will actually do is warm our temperatures up as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, and you're going to want to enjoy it because we go way down by the time we head into the weekend. As we go through the overnight hours, we slide back through the 20s, eventually into the lower 20s later on tonight, and look at our snowfall. So this lighter blue is mainly an inch or less, and then Pittsburgh about an inch, Joplin about an inch. We had near two inches, eastern parts of Barton County, and then of course, higher amounts, once you get into our northern counties, but this system's out of here, rolling off toward the east, snow across the eastern parts of Missouri. Clouds are breaking up, so we're going to have clear skies as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Here's our next storm system already building, which will start to affect us by the time we head into Friday. Look at this. All right, so rain increases Thursday night. This is an Arctic front. Look at the snow again. Same spot as what we got today. As we work into Friday morning, we should get a band of light snow, some light accumulations as we go into Friday morning. Notice the temperatures. So let's go into Saturday morning. We drop into the upper single digits. Saturday, we're only going to go into the 20s for highs. So remember that if you're heading up to Arrowhead. And then on Sunday, look at this. Another batch of light snow drops through again we could get some light accumulations. Notice the temperature Sunday afternoon, about five degrees. And then once we get into Monday morning, oh gosh, minus five, minus 10 for overnight low. So this is a really big cold snap, which is gonna head toward us. So our winter weather impacts for the weekend, at least a moderate impact for snow. Ice, not a huge problem, but the cold, a high impact. Also, it's gonna be windy across the region, which means our wind chills are going to be on the low side. Now, until we get there, it's still going to be cold, but it looks okay. Low to mid 20s for us by morning. We get mostly sunny skies for us tomorrow. Here's about the noon hour, lower 40s. I think most of us 46, 47, 48 degrees for an afternoon high. And then as we go into Thursday morning, we start in the 20s. Clouds will start to increase once we get into the afternoon. Then here comes the rain by the time we head into Friday night. All right, 44 by noon tomorrow, high temp, 47 degrees. As we look at the next 10 days, we'll have the rain pushing in on Thursday, a possible alert day Friday with snow, and then a high of only 22 Saturday, only 16 on Sunday, and a high of only 12 on Monday. Okay, Doug, thanks. The nation's first mission to return astronauts to the moon in over half a century is being pushed back. NASA officials today announced that Artemis II, which is designed to send humans back into orbit around the moon, is now set for September of next year instead of later this year. Artemis III, which was scheduled to send humans to the lunar south pole in late 2025, has been bumped to September of 2026. Safety is our top priority. And to give Artemis teams more time to work through the challenges with first time developments, operations and integration. We're going to give more time on Artemis 2 II and 3. Officials say the four astronauts selected for the Artemis 2 mission will continue to train for the trip. They include three Americans and one Canadian. Coming up, the latest on the investigation into Boeing jets grounded after an in-air incident. 
Topic today's Consumer Watch Meta says it's trying to make the social media world safer for younger users. Parent company of Instagram and Facebook is unveiling new oversight policies. They include additional parental and well being oversight tools. Officials also say they'll hide age inappropriate content like nudity and posts about eating disorders from those under 18 years old. The changes are expected to go into effect later this year. Ford is recalling nearly 140,000 focus models because of a safety related concern. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Ford focuses from 2016 through 2018 have faulty oil pump drive belts. Officials say that problem can cause a loss of oil pressure, increasing the chances of an engine stalling or loss of power braking. The recall also applies to Ford EcoSports from 2018 through 2022. Owners of affected vehicles will be contacted and the problems will be repaired at no cost. An ongoing inspection of Boeing 737 MAX 9s is turning up loose bolts on the grounded jets. The NTSB is focusing on those bolts as it investigates the door plug blowout on Alaska Airlines. Reporter Chris Van Cleve has been following the story in Portland. National Transportation Safety Board investigators are honing in on the four bolts that should have kept the door panel from flying off this Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 last Friday. The trouble is, they can't find them. We have not yet recovered the four bolts uh, that restrain it from its vertical movement, and we have not yet determined if they existed. The NTSB says it will be able to figure that out through additional testing, and a full report on the incident could take a year. To begin to develop FAA head Michael Whitaker declined to comment about the 737 at a conference in Washington, D.C. Tuesday. Another day with the 737 MAX grounded means hundreds of flight cancellations at airports across the country, a situation that is likely to continue for at least several more days. While passengers make other plans, Alaska and United continue to inspect grounded aircraft. CBS News has learned United has found loose bolts on at least five airliners, and Alaska turned up what it calls loose hardware on some of its MAX 9 fleet. Let's see what we find in the course of inspecting this, these 171 aircraft. Former FAA acting administrator Billy Nolan says consumers should be reassured. Overarchingly, this is a very safe set of aircraft, and I would ha have no hesitation or reservation in saying to the flying public that the 737 is a safe airplane to fly. The loose bolt findings do put pressure on Boeing to address safety concerns and quality control issues, the subject of Tuesday's company-wide summit. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News. Portland. The FAA has told Boeing to provide instructions to operators for inspections and maintenance. Rough weather along the U.S. East Coast is causing travel headaches nationwide. According to tracking site FlightAware, more than 800 flights were canceled today. More than 4,200 were delayed. At one point, the Federal Aviation Administration ordered a broad hold on Charlotte-bound flights due to thunderstorms. In addition to the holdups for some air travelers, Amtrak was forced to cancel some of its East Coast train schedules for today and for tomorrow. A final check of the forecast next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, a look at the severe weather battering much of the country, including flood warnings and tornadoes. Then on KOIM News at 6, why Joplin drivers are going to need to find a detour if they travel down Zora Road. Plus, why the future of a 100-year-old school in southwest Missouri is up in the air. And we're going to hear from the Girard High School girls basketball team who's dedicating this season to a Trojan alum. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOIM News at 6. Now let's check back with them. Yeah, cold night for us tonight. We're going to drop back into lower 20s, but warmer tomorrow. 47, 53 on Thursday. We are going to get some morning snow showers on Friday. And look at this Arctic air. Highs only into lower teens by early next week. Doug, thanks and thank you for joining us. CBS Evening News is next. And of course, we're going to be right back here for KOIM News at 6. We'll see you then. Let's make it a great evening.